Two weeks ago, we installed the ExoSlide motion system into the Ender 5 Plus. Now this is an upgrade that I am really excited for and I am looking forward to putting some miles on the Ender 5 Plus with the ExoSlide installed. In that video's comments, I got quite a few people that were asking about linear rails. So I am excited to announce that in today's video, we are going to be installing a linear rail into my Ender 3. Linear rails can often be found on a higher end 3D printers as well as other machines like CNC's. They're known for being incredibly rigid and providing very smooth motion, which translates into tight tolerances and being very precise. Like most components, not all linear rails are created equal, and if you go with name brand linear rails, it can add up very quickly, especially if you are going to be upgrading more than one axis, and in some instances, depending on your setup, you're using more than one for each axis. So for the sake of this video, and to keep it as cost effective as possible, we are not going to be using name brand linear rails. In this video, we are going to be using a $20 linear rail that I found over on Amazon. And on the Ender 3, we are going to be swapping out the V-slot wheels on the X-axis with this linear rail using a model that I found over on Thingiverse. I do have another upgrade coming up, which is actually the main reason I am installing this linear rail, but with the amount of comments I got on that last video talking about linear rails, I figured I would take you guys along and show you what goes into installing this on the Ender 3 if this is something that you may want to do. So in today's video, we're going to cover the parts needed, how to actually install the linear rail using the Thingiverse file that I will link in the description, as well as what my overall experience has been like. It's always exciting when we do a mod for the first time on the channel, so without further ado, let's get right into today's video. For this install, you're going to be needing the linear rail, an assortment of M3 screws, M3 T-nuts, and M3 nylon lock nuts. I learned the hard way and I should have known better with how long I've been printing, but anytime there's a Thingiverse model that doesn't have any makes, always take its legitimacy with a grain of salt. I printed it out, I was ready to install it and discover that for this linear rail, there is not enough of a gap between the hot end and where this bolts to the actual linear rail. So I had to brush up on my Fusion 360 skills and basically reverse engineered this part. I uh, kept it almost identical. The only change I made in this model was that I extended the part a little bit and made it where there was a further gap between the linear rail uh, mounting holes and the hot end mounting holes. I did print this out in PETG, which was per the original creator's recommendations. However, I wish I hadn't. Um, not that PETG isn't good, but PETG has a bit of flex to it. And because of how thin this is, this part does have some flex to it. And that kind of goes against the whole point of installing a linear rail. So if you're gonna keep the design as is, I'd recommend printing in something like ABS, um, but the STL and the Fusion 360 file, I will leave those in the description of this video. So if you do wanna print with PTG or modify this to make it beefier or improve upon it in any way, shape or form, you will not have to reverse engineer it. And you could take the work that I have done and just slightly tweak it to your liking. So as you can see here, on the right side, we've got the original model. On the left side, we've got the one that I designed based off of it. They are nearly a one-to-one -one, with the main difference being that it is a slight bit wider and you can see the holes for the hot end again are spaced out additionally. Aside from printing that out, you'll need to print out the hot end spacer and two of these linear rail uh, guide jigs. These will ensure that linear rail is going to be centered on the 2020 aluminum extrusions. And now that we've got that, it's time to install. Uh, starting off, we will disassemble the existing hot end carriage. There's going to be one screw on the top and one screw on the left side of this kind of fan housing. And by removing those two, you will be able to move this off to the side, which will give you access to the hot end that is going to be held in place by two screws that we will also uh, need to remove. I always recommend holding on to screws that you pull off, but in all likeliness or, or uh, in all honesty, you will be using different sized M3 screws to reinstall this. So if you lose them, it's not a big deal. But again, I pretty much hold on to all the things I take off of printers. By removing these two screws, the hot end will drop down and we can go ahead and move the hot end and the fan uh, assembly off and out of the way so we can turn our attention to the V-slot carriage, which we will now remove. Uh, you just want to grab a wrench to hold the bottom nylon lock nut in place and an Allen key and unscrew the bottom wheel. These still, again, are great for lots of other projects. So if you're like me and hoard all of your spare parts, um, I would say keep these. They're great for other things. Next, remove the two belt clips or the uh, belt slots that hold the belt in place and this will allow us to completely remove that X carriage. 
Now we will be installing the linear rail for this. We're just going to need a bag of M3 screws, some M3 T-nuts, and the linear rail. I believe I used M3 by 6 millimeter, but they might be M3 by 8 millimeter. Um, so try both and see which one you feel works better. Also, I did quite a bit of research to determine how many screws I should be using in this. Do I need 12 since there's 12 holes? Almost everything I read said that just having one on the outside of, of the outmost holes and one in the center was going to be sufficient. However, because I had plenty of screws and T-nuts, I decided to uh, do a little bit overkill and I installed six screws and six T-nuts uh, because I figured why the hell not. It's not going to do anything negative and I've got them. Let's make sure this thing is bolted in every single place. So we are going to take these spacers and that linear rail with the six screws or however many screws and T-nuts and we're going to pop this on the front of the X-axis aluminum extrusion. We will then use those printed clips to push one onto the left side of the linear rail and one onto the right side of the linear rail. Again, the sole purpose of these are to uh, center this on the front of the aluminum extrusion to make sure that when you bolt it down, it is as centered as possible. You don't want it to be curved at all. As far as spacing goes, you will want to make sure there's at least a few millimeters between the end stop uh, for your x-axis and the linear rail, like I have pictured here, that should be perfect. And then we can go ahead and start tightening them. I did go ahead and pull on the linear rail after tightening the first few just to make sure that the T-nuts were spinning accordingly. I've had a few instances where I install T-nuts thinking everything's tight and find out that they didn't spin and <laughs> whatever part I'm working on falls off. So again, I just worked my way from the right side to the left side and saw that it was all tight and you can just pull off these uh, alignment jigs. They might be great to keep on hand, but you won't be needing them for this install anymore. Then I just checked to make sure that everything was still sliding smoothly, which it was sliding like butter, and it hit the end stop, which is what we want to see, which will allow us to install our new printed hot end mount. Uh, for this, you will need four M3, I believe again by six millimeter screws. They're either by six or by eight, and we'll go ahead and bolt these into the four uh, screw holes that are on the linear rail. Make sure you get these in nice and tight because uh, since the whole point of this is to hold our hot end uh, nice and tight against the linear rail. You definitely don't want any slop and you want to make sure that these are tightened as much as possible. Next, we'll go ahead and install the hot end to this printed carriage. Uh, we're going to be using M3 screws for this as well. The size isn't as important as that it is at least long enough to go through the hot end, through the printed spacer, through the hot end carriage and into an M3 nylon lock nut. I did end up using different screws than these ones pictured here because these were actually a little bit overkill in length. But again, essentially the M3 goes into the hot end. The screw then goes through that printed standoff or that printed spacer and into the holes on that printed carriage. And then on the back side, I just took two M3 nylon lock nuts and bolted this up against the carriage. Uh, this will make sure that the hot end doesn't have any slop or sag. And this is also another reason why I feel that ABS would be better unless you go ahead and beef this up just because the weight and the kind of uh, tension put on by these screws, the PTG just in my opinion didn't feel like it was doing a very good job of, of holding uh, as, as tough as I would have liked it to against this printed component. So anyways, um, once we're done with that, the next step really is just to reinstall the uh, fan housing. I went ahead and used one long M3 screw on the top and an M3 nylon lock nut similar to what we did on the hot end just to make sure that this is bolted in place. And then the second hole on the left side of the fan assembly, since you can't actually have a screw go all the way through since it'll run into the um, linear rail, I just took a very, very short M3 screw and threaded it into the plastic. It's more of a placeholder than actually uh, bolting this, this uh bolting in place but it does help to just make sure that the fan housing or the fan shroud can't uh, wiggle once you've got this installed and the last step really is just to reinstall the belts to do this i would say it's a best idea to loosen the belt tensioner on the x-axis and just tuck these belts into place like pictured here and then just go ahead and retighten the x belt tensioner um, by just kind of pulling it away from the center of the printer and then tightening it in place, making sure that you've got uh, a good amount of tension. You may want to adjust your Y end stop as well. There's just two screws holding it in place, but it is possible that the hot end has pushed forward ever so slightly with this design. So uh, if you do notice that, then you can move the end stop forward slightly just to 
uh, make it stop a little bit earlier than it does by default. I didn't do that for this instance, but uh, again, that is something that you may want to do. Then for fun, in the last video with the exoslide, I had people asking about, you know, a print before and after, and I figured, okay, what the heck, let's take a 2020-20 uh, Chuck calibration cube and just let's print with it and see what the uh, tolerances are with the stock V-slot assembly and with the linear rail to see what the difference is. And I was actually really surprised, kind of, with the results. Um, I think that it's not very fair because of the fact that it's a PETG printed part that, in my mind, again, the design can use some uh, revision or at least some beefy or some beefing up. But the V-slot uh, print actually had better tolerances than the linear rail print. So I went ahead and posted kind of the end results here that I got with the V-slots versus the linear rails. So the V-slot was 20.22 by 20.04 by 19.84, while the linear was 20.14 by 20.24, which is way further off uh, by 19.69. I really just went ahead and did this because I had a lot of requests for it in the last video with the exo slide. I don't think it's a very fair test or comparison because of the fact that the linear rail isn't the factor here. In my mind, it's more the printed PTG um, carriage. And so I think if you want to improve upon this, again, just having a ABS carriage or having a beefier carriage can really improve those tolerances when you compare it again to the standard V-slot setup that the machine came with. I hope this video gives you a better idea of what goes into installing a linear rail into your 3D printer. The process is actually quite simple and the main improvement is going to lie in the actual design of the hot end carriage. Like I mentioned, I will go ahead and link the STL for this file as well as the Fusion 360 file so that way if you do want to improve upon the original design, make it beefier, add any additional holes or whatever to it, you will have full access to that and that will be in the description of this video. I will be replacing this printed hot ink carriage with the Micro Swiss's, uh, with the Micro Swiss's, with the Micro Swiss new direct drive linear rail uh, all metal hot end that'll be coming up in a video very soon here. And once that is done, that will majorly beef up the hot end carriage and make it much more rigid since the plate is aluminum. And perhaps after I do that install for fun, I can go ahead and print out another one of those calibration cubes and just see how much it uh, differs from the two values that I've already gotten from the stock calibration cube and the one with this printed hot end carriage. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. If you do decide to or if you already have upgraded your 3D printer on one of the axes or all of the axes to linear rails, let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been like. Also, if you have any questions about anything that was done in this video, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you did want to support the channel furthermore, I will go ahead and place links down below in the description to the Patreon. Thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making videos and content for all of you to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace.